Welcome back to Educator.com's SAT prep course. This lesson is on the basics of the essay section. Let's get started. All right, we begin, as always, with a brief lesson overview. We're going to ask, what is an essay? Why does the SAT ask for an essay? What are they actually looking for? Then we're going to look at the prompt, because these essays always use a certain prompt format. We're going to look at how your essay will be scored, and then we're going to conclude with some general tips for a better essay. All right, to begin with, what is an essay? Well, the word essay comes from the French word essayer, meaning to try or to attempt. The term was coined by the French writer Michel de Montaigne to describe his attempts to put his thoughts into writing. Now, what does this have to do with the SAT? Well, simply, an essay is an attempt to explain a thought in writing. Any thought. It is an attempt. By, the, by its very nature, it's an effort you may or may not succeed. And it's acknowledged in the format that it is only an attempt. Like a short story, an essay is tightly focused and can be read at a single sitting. This means that you don't have quite as many things to juggle when you're writing an essay. You're really just supposed to do one thing well. And really, you're just supposed to try. All right, so why does the SAT ask for an essay? Why in a test full of bubbles do they suddenly give you lines and say write? Well, the SAT is designed to test your readiness for college. Writing is an important college skill. You get to college, you will have to write a truly ridiculous number of papers, essays, analyses, all this stuff. They want to test your ability to do that because, frankly, colleges want to know. The essay also tests your ability to think on your feet and express your thoughts clearly, even under stress. Okay, they know that this test is stressful, they know that you're kind of freaked out about it, they want to know how you do when you're kind of freaked out. And finally, the essay gives you a chance to demonstrate your academic ability outside of the multiple choice format. So if you're the sort of person who doesn't do well on standardized tests, the essay gives you a little bit of a chance to bring your score up. And also gives them a chance to measure how you do outside of the world of little bubbles and number two pencils. All right. So, now that we've discussed what the essay is for, what do they want? Well, first and foremost, SAT, essay readers are looking for good writing. If you think about it, you have no chance to research uh, the topic of your essay before you get into the testing room. You have no chance to revise. They're really just looking for how well you can write off the top of your head under a time limit. So, what are they looking for? They're looking for varied and appropriate vocabulary. Good spelling, grammar, and syntax, which means English mechanics and the way you put your sentences together. A strong sense of organization. They're looking for varied sentence structure, so sentences of different lengths, different types of sentences. They're looking for a clear focus on the topic at hand, know what you're writing about and stick to it. And they're looking for a smooth progression of ideas. A really good essay should build from one idea to the next until you reach your conclusion. All right, secondly, and still quite importantly, SAT readers are looking for good content. Now, again, they know that you can't do your research ahead of time because you won't know the prompt, but they are looking for what you actually say. They're looking for a clear point of view on the issue. They're looking for you to take an opinion, uh, express it, and articulate it clearly. They're looking for strong critical thinking, okay, also something you can do without research. And they're looking for appropriate examples, reasons, and evidence. So. Whatever stance you take, take it firmly, have good reasons for taking it, explain it well, and apply critical thinking skills to whatever stance you take. All right, the prompt. The SAT essay prompt always, 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 always takes the same form. An excerpt or quotation from a book or magazine article, something like that, followed by a question asking your opinion on the main idea of the excerpt. A sample prompt from a previous SAT test will appear on the next slide. So let's take a look at an old prompt. A mistakenly cynical view of human behavior holds that people are primarily driven by selfish motives, the desire for wealth, for power, or for fame. Yet history gives us many examples of individuals who have sacrificed their own welfare for a cause or principle they regarded as more important than their own lives. Conscience, that powerful inner voice that tells us what is right and what is wrong, can be a more compelling force than money, power, or fame. So there's your quote. If your head is spinning, don't worry, the prompt's about to help you out. Is conscience a more powerful motivator than money, fame, or power? So you're supposed to be weighing conscience against money, fame, and power. Isn't that nice? They've actually summed up the main idea of the excerpt for you and put it in a nice little question so you know exactly what you're being asked. Plan and write an essay in which you develop your point of view on this issue. Support your position with reasoning and examples taken from your reading. 
your studies, your experience, or your observations. Now, after the question, this prompt is always the same. The plan and write an essay in which you develop your point of view, blah, blah, blah. That is always the same. And here's the important bit. Your examples are supposed to come from your reading, that includes fiction, anything you've studied in school, anything that's happened to you or anyone you know, or any general observations you've made about the universe. Chances are you've got at least one of those in your quiver, and you can draw examples from it. All right, so once you've written your essay, how is it going to be scored? You want to get a good score, you have to know how it's going to be scored. Your essay will be read by a trained SAT reader, usually a high school or college instructor, who will not see your name or any other identifying information. They won't know whether you're male or female unless you mention it in your essay. They won't know your ethnicity unless you mention it. They won't know your socioeconomic status, anything like that. They have no idea who you are. All they go by is your writing. Two readers read each essay and score it on a scale from 1 to 6. Their combined scores make up your essay score for a maximum of 12. So if you get one reader who's having a bad day, uh, there are checks and balances built into the system to prevent that, but you also get two readers. So if one person's like, I don't like this, this might be a perfect essay, but I'm only giving it a 4. Well, then the next reader can go, no, this is a really good essay, I'm giving it a 6. Then you get a 10, which is not so bad. Essay readers are encouraged to be forgiving and to reward students for writing well rather than punish them for writing poorly. They know these essays are first drafts written by high school students under a time limit. So they're not going to apply the same standards that they would to a critical analysis that you spent three weeks on for English class. Essay readers are also trained to ignore handwriting and avoid judging an essay by its length, although neat writing and a not-too-short essay always make a better impression than a short, messy submission. All right. So how do you get a score of 6, which is the maximum score any one reader can give you? Well, an essay in this, cat in this category demonstrates clear and consistent mastery, although it may have a few minor errors. So you don't have to have a totally perfect essay to get a 6, but the standards are fairly high. A typical essay effectively and insightfully develops a point of view, remember that, on the issue and demonstrates outstanding critical thinking, using clearly appropriate examples, reasons, and other evidence to support its position. It is well organized and clearly focused, demonstrating clear coherence and smooth progression of ideas. It exhibits skillful use of language using a varied, accurate, and apt vocabulary. It demonstrates meaningful variety in sentence structure. And it is free of most, not necessarily all, but most errors in grammar, usage, and mechanics. All right, well, if you can't quite make it to a six, what does a five look like? Well, an essay in this category demonstrates reasonably consistent ma mastery, although it will have occasional errors or lapses in quality. A typical essay effectively develops a point of view on the issue and demonstrates strong critical thinking, generally using appropriate examples, reasons, and other evidence. It is well organized and focused, demonstrating coherence and progression of ideas. It exhibits facility in the use of language, using appropriate vocabulary. It demonstrates variety in sentence structure. It is generally free of most errors in grammar, usage, and mechanics. All right, essay score number four. An essay in this category demonstrates adequate mastery, good enough, although it will have lapses in quality. Note that will. So if you're making serious mistakes, okay, you're into four territory. A typical essay develops a point of view on the, on the issue and demonstrates competent critical thinking using adequate examples, reasons, and other evidence. It is generally organized and focused, demonstrating some coherence and progression of ideas. It exhibits adequate but inconsistent facility in the use of language, using generally appropriate vocabulary. It demonstrates mm, some variety in sentence structure, and it has some errors in grammar usage and mechanics. All right, now we come to the three. You will notice something about the three score. The rubric for scoring a three on these essays is where the whining begins. If you write the kinds of things that make your teacher go, then you're getting into three territory. An essay in this category demonstrates developing mastery, which I've always thought sounds like, yay, you tried, you'll get it someday, and is marked by one or more weaknesses. Note that we finally have weaknesses in the description. It develops a point of view on the issue, demonstrating some critical thinking, but may do so inconsistently or use inadequate examples, reasons, or other evidence. It is limited in its organization or focus, or may demonstrate some lapses in coherence or progression of ideas. There will be points at which the reader just goes, what? 
Uh, it displays developing facility in the use of language. You're getting there. You're not there yet. <laughs> but sometimes uses weak vocabulary or inappropriate word choice. If you really misuse a word, you're down in three territory. It lacks variety or demonstrates problems in sentence structure. And it contains an accumulation of errors in grammar, usage, and mechanics. So you're making so many mistakes that someone just kind of goes, <sighs> All right, if you get a two, God forbid. An essay in this category demonstrates little mastery and is flawed by one or more of the following. Notice that we're now in the word flawed. This is a flawed essay. There is something wrong with it that is not going to be fixed. Ugh. It, it develops a point of view that is vague or seriously limited. It demonstrates weak critical thinking, providing inappropriate or insufficient examples, reasons, or other evidence. It is poorly organized and focused, or it demonstrates serious problems with coherence or progression of ideas, maybe sort of randomly stream of consciousness. It displays very little facility in the use of language, using very limited vocabulary or incorrect word choice. It demonstrates frequent problems in sentence structure. Readers absolutely hate this. It contains errors in grammar, usage, and mechanics so serious that meaning is somewhat obscured. So they get to one of your sentences and they just go, I don't even know what you were trying to say there. All right. One. An essay in this category demonstrates very little or no mastery and is severely flawed by one or more of the following weaknesses. You get even one of these problems and you have a one. It develops no viable point of view on the issue. It just kind of goes, there's an issue. I don't have an opinion or provides little or no evidence to support its position. I have an opinion and I can't tell you why I have it. It is disorganized or unfocused, resulting in a disjointed or incoherent essay. It displays fundamental errors in vocabulary. It demonstrates severe flaws in sentence structure. It contains pervasive, which means they're all over the place, errors in grammar, usage, or mechanics that persistently interfere with meaning, causing people who read the essay to look at it and just go, what? All right, I know what you're thinking. This is the worst possible score. You're wrong. There's a zero. An essay not written on the essay assignment will receive a score of zero. If you do not answer the question you are being asked, you will get a zero. All right, well, now that I've traumatized you sufficiently, how can, how can we uh, actually write a better essay? Well, here are a few tips. Read the prompt carefully and make sure you write about the topic given, because of course, if you don't answer the question you're being asked, you get a zero. Outline before you write. This will be covered in our lesson on essay outlining, but it's a really, really good idea. Take a minute or so and jot down an outline of what you're going to do. That way, when you're halfway through writing your essay, uh, you don't go, wait, what was my next point? I've lost my example. Ah! Outlines. They're your friend. Use a variety of examples from different fields. Use examples from literature, history, your personal experience, and so on. If one example falls flat, another one can rescue your essay. And the more fields you draw from from your examples, the wider ranging your intellect appears to be, and generally the better you sound. Vary your sentence structure. We have a lesson in our English grammar course on sentence structure. If necessary, go back and review it and make sure that you're not just writing the same sentence over and over again. Use clear, precise, and appropriate vocabulary. Build your word power. Build your vocabulary. Go check out the SAT vocabulary lessons. Build up your vocabulary and best of all, read a book. Use action verbs. Verbs that describe actions. Don't just say, you know, don't just use be and go all the time. Use vivid verbs, viv uh, verbs that really describe things well. Good verbs can make your sentences. Use both abstract and concrete nouns. Abstract nouns describe concepts that cannot be perceived with the senses, such as mercy or happiness or misery. Uh, concrete nouns describe things that you can perceive with your, with your senses, such as pencil or rain. Use both of those. Abstract nouns are necessary for discussing abstract concepts, one of which will probably be the issue you're asked about. Concrete nouns will show up in your examples and show that you actually know what you're talking about. And finally, review your writing after you're done and don't be afraid to make small changes. You may not have time at the end of the essay period to do a complete rewrite and you almost certainly won't have space to do a complete rewrite, but it's worth it to go through and go, oh, I made a mistake, scribble, scribble, write in the correct bit, or oh, this is a better word, scratch, scratch, write in the correct bit. Do a little bit of that and it will uh, actually send your essay quite a long way. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching, educator.com.